I'll be honest with you, the Mac Mini is incredible. The amount of value you get from this single purchase is incomparable to any other product that Apple offers today. So let's talk about it. I bought the base model, which includes Apple's M1 chip and an eight core CPU and eight core GPU, eight gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of SSD storage. I think you get the most value from the base model as upgrading to 16 gigabytes of RAM is really only worth it for a very tiny percentage of people and workflows. And then people who want to upgrade the storage, you're much better off buying external SSD solutions from companies like Samsung, like a Samsung T5, for example, that's far cheaper than paying the upgrade price that Apple charges. The cherry on top, if you want to think long-term, is that it's a lot easier to resell a base model computer than ones with upgrades because the RAM and SSD upgrades don't really add a lot of value in your ability to resell this computer in the future. So how does my base model Mac mini perform? For everyday computing, it's literally a no brainer. It's incredibly fast to use. For heavier workflows like 3D modeling, coding, music creation, graphics design, I strongly recommend you research those real world experience workflows on Reddit as your mileage will vary depending on what you're doing. For me, I do a lot of heavy video editing on Final Cut Pro and some light photo editing on Lightroom and Photoshop and the base model has been more than enough power for me to create all the content that you see here on this channel. The Mac mini is also extremely valuable in terms of its port selection. It actually has the most amount of ports out of any M1 Mac for the least amount of money. You get an ethernet port, two Thunderbolt USB 4 ports, two USB-A ports and a headphone jack. If you do need more USB ports or other expansions, I will link some of my favorite USB hubs in the description down below for you guys to check out. Something else to keep in mind about the value of the Mac mini is that it's not just about the internals. It's not just the M1 chip, the expanded ports. Really what the Mac mini is offering to you is the cheapest entry into the Apple ecosystem. iMessage, iCloud, seamless integration across all of your Apple devices. Like the list is insane how good the Apple ecosystem is. And I actually will drop a video up above of a video I made about why I find the Apple ecosystem so addicting. I kind of go through all of my favorite features. So if you're curious about that, I will leave it up there for you to check out. Sort of a negative with the Mac mini and something to consider is that there are hidden costs to this computer. You do need to buy your own keyboard, mouse, and monitor to get started if you don't have something like that already. For my monitor, I use an LG 34 inch ultra wide. And then for my keyboard and mouse, I use the Logitech MX keys and Logitech MX Master 3 mouse. I also recommend you consider picking up a pair of headphones or speakers to use with your Mac mini because the ones that are built in sound absolutely terrible. The sound literally sounds like it's coming out of a tin can from like the early 2000s. I would avoid using them at all costs. Another negative to the Mac mini has to do with Bluetooth connectivity. It actually has never gotten better over the months of owning this computer. It's very unreliable to use third-party accessories from Logitech, for example, via Bluetooth. I find that it just happens enough where there's latency issues and drop-offs where it just becomes annoying. And really the only solution you have is to use the USB unifying receiver, which you have to actually plug in and take up one of the ports. So that works, that's a solution, uh, but it, it, it's a little disappointing because it's not like M1 Max can't do Bluetooth properly. My Magic Keyboard, my Magic Trackpad, and my Magic Mouse all work flawlessly on my M1 iMac, as well as on my Mac Mini. So I'm not sure what's going on, but the third-party accessories just can't really seem to get Bluetooth right on M1 Max. So as much as it kind of pains me to say this, I'd probably recommend you stick to Apple-based products like the Magic Keyboard, Mouse, and Trackpad, one of those three, to kind of control your M1 Max, you'll have a much better experience, I think. After all of these months, is the Mac Mini worth your money in purchase? Of course it is. This thing is a no-brainer, and it's perfect for somebody who's looking to get an entry-level computer that has the capabilities to do professional workflows. You just get so much value from the base model that comes in at $699 US, and they also sell these M1 Mac Minis on refurbished, so you can get these for even cheaper 
probably 100 or $150 off. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to comment down below, hashtag Mac Mini, if you finished the video. Drop a like if you made it to the end, and subscribe if you guys are brand new to the channel. But anyways, I'll catch all of you guys in another video later this week. Peace.